Okay, so it's been, uh, my brain forgot how to map. Let me try that we're again. Going into week it, five. We're going into week five. We are four games down. Five games if you're the Bucks and the Falcons. Yep, which was a great game. I didn't get to see it. I was, was really good game. I like followed the score a couple times because I, I did a double feature. Clay and I watched the original Japanese version of The Ring and then the American remake. I just did not have my phone with me during the first movie. The what? Uh, I was just saying Ringu. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... The game ended like right as the second movie was ending, so I didn't get to see it. But I was like, "Shit, this has been like a really good oh, yeah. game." Early on, I mean, like they were trading, you know, touchdowns back and forth, and then like the Bucks kind of started to pull away a little bit. And mm -hmm. I was like, "All right, I think they're gonna clean this up." But Falcons came back, Kirko Thuggins, bro. So did they get the ball first in OT? Or? They did, yeah. Okay, and it was like I think the third play or something like that. They had like a sixty-five yard touchdown, so it didn't last long. I still am not a huge fan of like the sudden death overtime rules I, I i like that they tweaked it to where it's like at least now a, a field goal won't just mm -hmm. end it but i still feel like walk-off touchdowns kind of just feel lame i like the idea but here's my thing about overtime so i'm glad we i wasn't sure if i was going to get to have this rant or not i'm glad we were able to segue into it i <laughs> i hate the idea of ties and here's why i hate the idea of ties because yeah. if you want to say like all right we don't want to play several extra quarters for someone to win because we don't want to risk more injury or anything like right. that. I totally get that. I feel like if you want to say we'll have one extra quarter and if no one scores, we end the game, cool. Both teams should just take a loss. Because the thing is, a tie is always better than a loss. Like, for example, let's say let's say if the Falcons the Bucks had tied and they both finished 10, 6, and 1... And then, like, the Saints finished 10 and 7, but, like, swept the Bucks. The Bucks would have a better record yeah. despite having the, the same, same amount of wins. Loss. Yeah, it's like, I don't like that. Yeah. But that's also just because me seeing the Bucks and Falcons play, like, I would love for both teams to be able to lose. Please let this in a, happen. In a world, both of them could lose. <laughs> like, it'd be wonderful. <laughs> so I'm, I'm guessing that you would not be a proponent of. If you tie, both teams just get a win. Oh, no. Hell no. It's like, you did, if you didn't win, you lost. <laughs> yeah. Both of you lost. I wish that they would do it similar to... Because, like, college football's overtime rules are pretty nice. Mm. Like, again, moving to, like, the where it's just, like, trading two-point conversions. And it's like, all right, who who can't convert first or whatever? I like that more. That's better. I think that's a better version of a sudden death. I think that works. I feel like I've seen Pat McAfee say this, and it's probably a joke, but, like, just do penalty kicks. Like, make the kick in your oh, top six. That would be, it'll be It would be kind of fun. It, do like, Especially if you do it, like, okay, like, every made kick, you have to go back 10 yards. Mm -hmm. That would be wild. Like, all right, here's an extra point. Okay, now I got to make a 45 yarder, a 55 yarder. Okay, let's see who can make a 60 yarder. Okay, so here's what it is: is you come out with the punters first. The first team has their punter punt from midfield, and he tries to pin them as far back as he can. Then the other team's punter gets to punt from wherever they pinned him, and he gets to try to put the ball as far down the field as he can for the field goal team to try to make their field goal. <laughs> <laughs> that be so fucking funny. <laughs> then teams are going after it's like, all right, who's got the biggest legs? Like you just got punters that are drilling at like eighty yards down the field. <laughs> oh god. Okay, so uh yeah. So been a lot happening already in the season. A lot of things that uh not expected. Yeah, I <laughs> there's one team for sure that I know both of us got very, very wrong. Yeah. I had two for me actually. I because I was high on the Eagles and they have not been good. I they haven't been like dog shit. They've been pretty bad. <laughs> They've been pretty bad. All right, so I think what we're gonna try to do is start in the NFC, do an NFC video break, and then do an AFC video. We might still do that tonight. We might do the AFC video like tomorrow. So, which division do you want to start with? Let's jump in on the NFC, and I'll let you pick the division though, that we start with. Okay. You want to go straight to your boys? Let's go straight to the NFC South. Let me start with the Saints. So, the <sighs> NFC South, of course, uh, Atlanta, Tampa Bay, New Orleans, Carolina, and those two teams, Atlanta, Tampa Bay, are the only two teams that actually have their week five on the schedule already. So, both so. are three and two, correct? Right. And then Atlanta, or excuse me, not Atlanta, New Orleans, Carolina are both two and two. No, Carolina sorry, one, one and three yeah. because they lost last week. Andy Dalton got him one win. <laughs> Second best QBR in the league. <laughs> that is crazy. A small sample size, but he balled out. 
that first the first game was against the Raiders, where they were up like thirty six to seven or some shit. It was in the game and them. It destroyed them. Yeah, that was a so. I don't know if this is a bold prediction. I don't know if this is a hot take. The Saints are beating the Chiefs on Monday night. And here is why I can say it with certainty and conviction. Because the Chiefs have only been winning by, like, a single score in all their games. See, not that. Although that helps. Like, the Chiefs don't look super dominant. Yeah. They are running out of offensive bodies to be yeah, able Rashid to Rice use. Is on IR now. Pacheco is on IR. Hollywood Brown is out for, like, the whole season. Yeah. Here's why I know the Saints are going to win, because I'm, s early on in the year, we did the video, I was like, dude, they're not going to be good. Yeah. I know what to expect from this team. They're going to be mediocre, they're going to underachieve. I understand what I'm getting into. And then what do they do? They impress me. It's yeah. Carolina, I get it. You beat a professional football team by 37 points. Yeah. It's hard with, to with not... With backup quarterback. No, we, we were using cards. Oh, I thought you were talking about the Panthers. No, 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 sorry. I was talking about oh, uh, no, yeah, like the Saints. Saints it's yeah. like we like it's a bad team. It's still impressive. It's hard not to get a little excited. And then the Dallas game happened. Yeah. Where we beat the shit out of them. It was like was that the oh, Camara had like four touchdowns. Yeah. yeah. It was like, okay, you know, the defense is balling, the offense can't be stopped. Okay. You convinced me. Bot, I am bot in. like I am excited. I now have expectation. This and is our what year. happened as soon as I had expectation? The team gets injured to shit. The offense can't score. The defense plays well but can't finish. It is exactly what I have come to expect of the Dennis Allen Saints. Which means now that I am at a point where I'm like, yeah, we're mediocre. I don't have to be excited. It is what it is. Yeah, now they have around. to beat the Chiefs to get me excited again so I can have hope. What if they just obliterate the Chiefs? And that's the thing. Like, it might happen. I'm like, like okay, we're back. I can be excited again. Like 49 to nothing. And just, ugh. Uh, pick off Patrick Mahomes like eight times. I also <laughs> mentioned during that video, which I've talked about several times in my Thursday videos, that I flipped a coin to predict the Saints season. Every game has been wrong. So the reverse coin is still in effect. Well, and if reverse coin happens, we will go 7-10 and 10 and make the playoffs. And anything can happen. Because for all I know, it'll be like, all right, the Saints went on a run because the team got healthy, looks as good as they did the first two weeks, and a 7-10 and 10 team wins the Super Bowl. Which would be funny as hell. The rest of the division would have to be so bad. Like... You'd have to have them like all bottom out. <laughs> it could happen. Yeah. Or I mean, I, I don't mean, know. It maybe is like one of the weaker divisions. So. Or maybe we take because like get the yeah we get the seventh seed because the NFC is just top heavy. Yeah. It can happen. It's true. Do I think it will? No. But if the reverse coin keeps happening, I have to have hope in something. Jeez. So we touched on uh, New Orleans and Carolina a little bit. I uh, I didn't want to bring up that one stat though for the Carolina Panthers where it was like. The first, uh, what was it, three weeks? Or it was the first weeks, two with Bryce. First two with Bryce, they were averaging 176 yards on offense, which was the worst in the league. So <laughs> Obviously the worst in the league. Uh, since Andy Dalton has taken over their fifth in yards per game at 405. <laughs> so it really was just a quarterback change that they needed to kind of get their which, stuff going. It's so interesting because like during those first couple weeks, and a lot of last year too, I kept seeing people be like, dude, it's not on Bryce. The team around him is bad. Yeah. The team around him is bad. And I'm not going to say that it's a really good team, but it's like, man, they have enough pieces Dalton's to more doing a lot. Yeah, more he's doing a lot teams. with them. And I, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to hate on Bryce Young. He's in the division, so it's not like I want the Panthers to do well. But I don't want to see Bryce be terrible. Like, yeah. I want him to have a good career. Also, you don't want to see them get the number one overall pick again. I, I, Manning, I guess. Yeah, or, or Quinn Ewers. Who's he? Is he Texas? Like yeah. they're the actual he's, starter? He's the Texas starter, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, Arch probably won't. I doubt he'll come out this season. I bet he stays another year and actually becomes the starter. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Honestly, by that time, maybe then, that's when they, maybe, <laughs> they maybe go for it and yeah. draft Arch. Who knows? Uh, 
But yeah, so Carolina, obviously, still pretty bad, but Andy Dalton's making him look a lot better. And Andy Dalton's fifth overall in QBR, or second overall Yeah, it was QBR. second overall. Second overall Right behind QBR. Josh Allen. Crazy. Bro is playing for his life. Uh, so then we have left the two, Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Tampa and Atlanta. Tampa Bay, Baker Mayfield has been balling, and I love to see it. Boomer Sooner, baby, go. Uh, and he actually threw a touchdown to Sterling Shepard last night, so the OU connection. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, was, I, I obviously I know you don't like to see them do well, but I like to see Baker. And do that's well. the thing is, I'm like <laughs> I hate the I hate the Bucks, but I love Baker. Yeah. So like I I love it and I hate. I felt the same when he went to Carolina a couple yeah. years ago. It's like I want your team to be so bad and I want you to do it's so like, well. You can play I hate really good, this. but you guys have to lose every exactly. Game. <laughs> like throw for 500 yards and lose. And lose. Be like Drew Brees when the Saints defense was just dog shit. <laughs> Speaking of throwing for 500 yards, Kirk Thuggins. And like I was saying, we were talking yards. about it earlier, he finally had a good game as a Falcon. Yeah, and again, I argue that the comeback win was like still pretty solid. And I said, like, that was, I think that was more the Eagles' but, defense than yeah, the Falcons. And again, the Eagles are just so bad. I, I, I think the Eagles are legitimately bad. They have something wrong with them. I don't know what it is, but it's something. Uh, and then Atlanta, yeah, I, I mean, uh, Bijan Robinson has been. So so, I thought he was gonna have a little bit hotter start to the year, especially after like Arthur Smith basically was just like knee knee captain last year. Um, but he's been all right. Uh, but overall, I mean, their offense has been pretty solid. So I think Kyle Pitts had his first game in like years. Kyle Pitts. I saw that he had a. Uh, it was like last week. It was like his first game without a catch. Uh, it was like, I don't remember if it was like the what the what it was, but I thought it said something like his entire professional career. Might have been because I think he usually is good for like one or two. They just don't throw to him very often. I think yeah. last week against the Saints, he was like zero for three, and I think last night he had like eight catches for eighty yards or mm-hmm. some shit. I don't remember exactly what the yardage was, but I think I saw they had eight catches. Yeah, yeah. It's like the previous week he only had three targets, so not a whole lot. Drake London has been legit though. That oh, he's dude, very good. That dude has been balling out. But so, but yeah. so my pick to win the division when we had started when we did this four weeks ago was I had said I think it's going to be Tampa. Mm-hmm. Right now, I would say, depending on what the hell the Saints want to do, that still kind of feels about right. The Falcons are about where I thought they would be. Like this yeah. is a team that's still kind of feels like they're underachieving and trying to figure it out, but they don't look bad. But they yeah. could be better. Yeah. And Carolina with Bryce, they looked about as good as I thought they would. And then I mean, they I want to say no much. offense, but I mean it's no, yeah. no. I, I I I agree. Um, I will say though, it's like they have they have looked cons- much better than I thought they would with Andy Dalton. No, I, I would agree with that as well. Like you could definitely see there's he gave them that spark. Yeah, I didn't expect the turnaround to be that drastic. So yeah, I think I also, if I remember correctly, said Tampa Bay, and that still feels. Pretty good. I mean, they've been playing solid. Bakes got like the second most passing touchdowns behind Sam Darnold, <laughs> uh, which is just insane. I think he did time last night with last night's game. I think he got it to eleven, but still, Sam has eleven on the season already. Yeah, eleven through four games, <laughs> almost averaging three a game. That's wild. Yeah, and only four of those are Justin Jefferson. Yeah, he's spreading it out. Jordan Addison has been uh, racking them up too, I believe. So is that our transition to the NFC North? Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's go up to. Oh gosh. All right. There there was a team I said I was very wrong about. That was Minnesota. I had yeah. said I was the like, all right. Darnold I was like, all right. Minnesota I think Vikings. the Lions are going to win the division. I think Green Bay is going to be a strong contender. They're going to be super tough. <laughs> Jordan Love. The Bears. I kept hearing people talk about the Bears, and I didn't buy it, and I didn't buy it, and then finally I was like, all right, I'm going to buy it. I'll say the Bears play super well, the offense clicks, they go to the playoffs, and the Vikings suck. This is a team that's like a four to six win team. I don't think they're going to be very good, and I am eating crow on that prediction. It looked great. And I remember like even saying, I was like, yeah, I mean, I wasn't high on them when they had J.J. McCarthy as their starter, and then he got injured, and they were like, Sam Darnold's going to be starting. I was like, no, I'm definitely not. (laughs) believing in the Vikings and like not only have they gone undefeated Sam Darnold's been the best quarterback in the league (laughs) like geez I did not see that coming I don't know uh what he did in this offseason but it worked I don't know I'm I guess 
I'll give credit to Kyle Shanahan for being his coach last year. Maybe that unlocked something. Mm -hmm. Kevin McConnell being the coach this year, having Justin Jefferson and Addison. Yeah, I mean, that does help. Not being on the Jets or the Panthers. I think you do a good morale boost. (laughs) Uh, yeah, no, it, I was shocked to see that they, like, kept winning. And, like, not just winning, but, like, dominating teams. And beating good teams. Because it's not like, all right, they beat Carolina and the Broncos. Yeah, like, they beat the <laughs> beat the 49ers. Beat the shit out of the Texans. Last week was weird. Because they were up 28 to nothing. Yeah, it was like, all right, they're steamrolling the Packers. And then almost, if the Packers could make field goals, they would have lost the game. Yeah, I was like, I was, yeah, I, I had turned that game off. I was like, all right, well, they're just running away with this one. And then ended up checking the score later. I was like, holy crap, they only won like three? Uh, I was like, wow. Um, but yeah, yeah, the Vikings have been far and away the surprise team mm-hmm. of the season. Uh, we'll see if they can keep that up. I will be interested to see in the next chicken video if they have kept up that sustained success. Um, Could you check what their schedule is for the next four weeks? Yeah. Because I know they're playing, I believe it's the Jets in London is this week or next week. Let's see. Oh, that's, oh. Excuse me. I wonder so, when they first play the Lions. This uh, next upcoming game is the Jets, uh, which is actually a London game. Uh, so it's going to be at 8.30 a.m. on Sunday. Then they play the Lions. Okay. Then they play the Rams. And they play the Colts. They could easily go like three and one during that stretch. Yeah, the Lions would probably be like the obviously the biggest hurdle. Um, I mean everyone else is like five hundred or less. And then the week after that, they get the Jaguars, so that's another dub. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get the Titans, so that's another dub. <laughs> Sorry, the <coughs> Titans and Will Levis. Just the Will Levis memes are so funny. <laughs> the Mayo Man. Just that image of him after week one on his knees watching the pick six get returned is so funny. And I think it was week two is when he's like trying to shovel it to the guy behind him. He's like in midair. Yeah, he's like, ah, go run for it, guy. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, I, I do think uh, at least he was smart to uh, get that Hellman's <laughs> deal, you know, like cash in try to get some money now while you have any kind of relevance because after this season i don't know <laughs> who knows i mean look at sam darn that's true so maybe, maybe he'll wait, go like, to the Vikings years. in a couple years and ball <laughs> sam darnold and geno smith what do they have in common they got away from the jets and they played really well <laughs> that's very true hell even flacco like a couple years ago he was on the jets it was like all right this is the end of his career and then the next year he gets off his couch goes to cleveland it's come back clear of the year. Yep. so when is uh zach wilson gonna take off you know, I don't know if he's the backup or the third string in Denver, but maybe there's a point where they're like, all right, our defense is really good. Let's bench Bo Nix, put in Zach Wilson, and he starts killing. That if my Broncos hilarious. playoff pick is correct because of Zach fucking Wilson, I would be ecstatic. That's a bizarre world. <laughs> That's not going to happen. I, I will say that right now. But there's it, no way that happens. But it, and the fact Although, you know, that I would, I would have said that about Sam point. Donald at the beginning of the season Honestly. being undefeated. There's just no way. But uh, so, <laughs> moving on from the darling Vikings, we got the actual U.S. darling, the Detroit Lions. They're at three and one. They've been pretty solid so far. Jared Goff had that amazing, mm-hmm. perfect game, eighteen of eighteen, and then did not get awarded the game ball. <laughs> Because even being perfect is not enough. But for Dan Campbell. <laughs> you have to be better than perfect for Dan Campbell. Uh, so, yeah, uh, they have been about as solid as we expected, you know. Um, Who is their one loss? Let's see. So, so they beat Seattle. They beat the Rams in overtime. I think they beat the Cardinals. It was the Bucks. The Bucks. okay. I think that was like a really close, low-scoring game. 2016. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, and Goff did not do well in that game, and he threw for 307 yards with two picks, no tutties. Didn't he throw, like, 50 times or something? Yeah, 55. <laughs> They're wearing it out. But it's funny, you know, you go 55, and then it turn around to a much more efficient 18. 18 of 18. <laughs> but yeah, um, the line, it looked like the first couple weeks, the offense was trying to get it figured out. 
And I think Seattle's defense has been playing pretty well. So to be able to just be perfect against Seattle of all teams yeah. was a really good look. Yeah. The Lions look kind of like what you were saying. They look about where I thought they would be. They look like a very good team. They look like a very efficient team. Aiden Hutchinson is eating. The oh. offense is clicking. Yep. I would not be surprised to see them make a deep run. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seems like they uh, aren't really suffering from any kind of, like, postseason hangover kind of effect. Like we're seeing with, like, maybe, like, the 49ers. And... 49ers have a lot of injuries, though. That is true. But, uh... Or, I mean, even the or like, the Bengals. Chiefs. Well, they weren't in the playoffs last year, but... Yeah. But the Chiefs are just... I don't know. They win, but it's like it looks. Yeah, it's like they're four and zero, but they don't feel like they're four. They should. They don't deserve to be four and zero. One last thing about the Lions is that uh, the uniforms they wore in that last game. Oh, they looked the really black good. Pants, that black jersey really with the blue helmets. Those blue helmets were sick. Okay, I, I feel like I do want to ask. What did you think of the Falcons jerseys and the helmets in the last game? Because I saw a lot of people commenting on them. The thing was, is like it was kind of strange to me because the red didn't look red. It was like almost orange kind of looking. That's the thing, because whenever I see it, because like you know, I'm saying it's fair. I'm gonna always hate on the Falcons. I like the Falcons, <coughs> like especially like when they have like the the more black jerseys. I yeah. think they look really nice. Yeah. I don't like the red helmets. I'm like they look like the Browns. That's exactly. I was like they they didn't look like like Falcons helmets. Like when I turned it on, I was like, are the Browns playing? <laughs> or like the Bengals maybe? I don't know. But yeah, it didn't look like their color of red. So I was like. It was a little weird. I mean, like, the actual design of them or whatever was, like, all right. But, yeah, that helmet looks strange. Um, also, I just saw a thing that uh, a day after the game, they did give Jared Goff a game ball. Okay. <laughs> for, for a perfect <laughs> game. So they made it right. Um, so, yeah, then Green Bay, uh, we, we mentioned a little bit before, obviously their season is, like, a lot more in flux now that Jordan Love has gone down. Well, I mean, he's back. He played last week. Oh, I thought he was, like, done. No, like, he was, it seemed like he was going to be out, I think I'd seen, like, three to six weeks. Like, he played the entire game against the Vikings. Oh, I thought that they said that when he got injured, it was like, they thought he tore his ACL. No, I I don't remember what they said it was, but, yeah, he was able to play. Oh, okay. I'm surprised. I thought he was, like, done, done, because I was, like, that right after he signed that huge contract but here's, and go down for the season. here's the funny thing. They are 0-2 with Jordan Love and 2-0 and with Malik Willis. Now... It looks like Jordan Love is the better quarterback for the team. But it is just kind of one of those funny things whenever you see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, hmm, do we go with the results-based or, like, the eye test, you know? But, uh, no, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'd be interested to see how they bounce back with Love kind of getting back into the rotation and getting under uh, center. But uh, I still am not buying in on, like, the Jordan Love hype. Mm. As, so... And I mean, he, again, like you said, he's 0 2. <laughs> so. He's, for the most part, looked good in those games. Because uh, watching a lot of the Vikings game, definitely threw like two picks. Definitely not good. But I saw him make some really good throws. Let's see. He ended up 32 of 54, almost 400 yards, 389 yards, four tutties, but yeah, then the three picks. Three picks hurts. <laughs> Look at that win probability. <laughs> the Vikings were just like, <laughs> like annihilating them, and then like all of a sudden it's like bleep, starts to dip a little bit. It's just like, like really back. high nineties. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like dips down to like eighty one. Whenever Green Bay starts to like get some points, it's like whoa, and then and then it's like, out. Yeah, and they're, it's like they're, all right, they're not fine. they're not gonna they're not gonna finish it. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So Green Bay, uh, and at two and two, I kind of feel like that's exactly where I would imagine them to be. Middle of the pack, they're like an okay team. <laughs> and then we got the Dub Bears. Yeah, last but not well, actually, the last and least. <laughs> last, <laughs> last and least, the Bears. Uh, are which, they also two and two? They are two and two. They don't feel like it. Like I, I forgot they won Week One. I jet ass thought this team was one and three for like the past few days. Bear in mind, they beat the Titans on Week One by one score. And that was not because of Caleb Williams. Nope. <laughs> like, that was, like, what, a, like a pick six. Uh, I think a blocked punt returned for a touchdown mm -hmm. 86 yards. Yeah. Yeah, they had a pick six, yeah, and a blocked punt for a return for a touchdown. Uh, and then they beat the Rams last week, mm -hmm. which the Rams almost uh, came back on that one. But, 
Caleb finally had a, a okay game. You know, 153 yards and a touchdown. No, no interceptions. So at least it was clean. Uh, but the main thing that uh, we've been seeing is he, and I mentioned this in our preseason thing too, he has been taking a lot of sacks. Mm -hmm. I think that the Bears offensive line maybe has given up the most sacks. Um, I remember when we were watching them play the Texans. I remember you kept saying, like, here's the problem. He just holds on to the ball way too long. Yeah. And, like, some of this is on the O-line to bad protection. Some of this is on him. Yes. And and maybe it's, like, a scheme thing, too, but I, I doubt it. I bet that there are timings on those routes that are supposed to come out faster, and he's either checking off of them to, like, look for something better or trying to make a play happen with the speed. But, yeah, he holds on to the ball a lot longer than he probably should, and he gets himself into tough situations because of that. And he puts his offensive line in tough situations because of that. When he's moving around in the pocket like that, I think they've uh, drawn a decent number of holding calls, too. And again, byproduct of trying to protect a moving quarterback that's weaving left and right. Uh, so, yeah. 2-2. Two and two. Um, Again, kind of surprised that they even have the two wins. Yeah, honestly. Um, either one of those games could have gone as a loss. So, uh, yeah. I, I imagine that they'll probably start to tick up more in that loss column than the win column uh they're just overall i didn't i don't know their defense looks okay um but their offense hasn't shown a whole lot of promise yet so maybe they'll get experience and can gel a little bit better up throughout the season but i i think that they're still just going to be like exactly what they, we thought they were like it's it's four weeks in it's early there's usually a team every year that doesn't look that good that goes on a run and like makes it to the playoffs. Houston did that last year. Jacksonville did it the year before. It could still happen. Yeah. As of right now, I am definitely regretting making the Bears to go to the playoffs. This right now does not look like a team that is on that trajectory. No. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. Like they're too uh, mistake prone. You know, it's like I, it feels like a lot of like a uh, learning curve bumps. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit before they get all the kinks worked out there. So we'll see. But, but I think that's a good transition into a young team that I did not think was going to make the playoffs. That's looking good as hell right now in the Commanders and yeah, Jaden and Daniels. East, yeah. They are three and one, leading the division. I think in their yeah. last three games, they maybe punted once, yeah. maybe twice. Yeah, they have been rocking it so uh let's look at their last few weeks so their loss their only loss is also to the bucks uh in week one 37 20 then they beat the giants <laughs> barely 21 18 no did not score a touchdown they just kicked field goals every time they had the ball <laughs> uh and then they beat the Bengals uh two weeks ago that was 38 33 so it's pretty close and then they just <laughs> annihilated it's like the 42 Cardinals. 14 42 to 14 yeah and uh let me see real quick yeah, Jaden Daniels, 26 of 30. So he only had four incompletions. 233 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Not bad. And then let me check the box score. because I, I don't know what the stat too. was, but I think the stat I saw is that Jaden Daniels has thrown more touchdowns than incompletions. Uh, I mean, maybe. Let's see. Let me go to his little page real quick. On the season, it looks like he has an 82.1% completion rate. So, he has... No, no, there's no way. He has 19 incompletions. There's no way he's going to... Okay, there's no way he's 20 <laughs> touchdowns. So, it, it might not have been that, but it was, like, something weird kind of close to that. Like, his stats are insane. Yeah, no, I mean, he's been very, very good. Um, And, you know, here, let me let me check something real quick, because... How many touchdowns has he thrown? He's thrown three touchdowns, but he's run for four. Okay. Um, That makes sense. Yeah. I think his first touchdown was like to an O lineman. <laughs> I can I can see that doing like a trick play. But yeah, he uh he's run for a decent amount of yards. First game he had eighty eight rushing yards, then forty four, then thirty nine, then forty seven. He's had a rushing touchdown in both of their last two games. Uh, I saw like some stat talking about it's like if he gets a rushing touchdown in this game, he would join like Cam Newton and Anthony Richardson. I think as the only quarterbacks that have five rushing touchdowns in the first five games in their career. Or, yeah, in their career. Uh, yeah, Jaden Daniels has been balling out, man. Like, uh, I don't know for sure. I, I, I thought that maybe we had talked about him a little bit when we were talking about Offensive Rookie of the Year. Because I, what I remember is that you had brought him up, 
but then I think you would said I think it's going to be Marvin Harrison. Yeah. I also had uh, who was it? I was having this conversation I think with a buddy of mine when I was talking about like the difference between like a type of, the types of quarterbacks and it's like whenever you look at someone like JJ McCarthy as like a franchise quarterback, it doesn't feel as like I don't know as like a no brainer. And like being like, oh yeah, that guy looks like a franchise quarterback. Versus someone like Jaden Daniels, mm-hmm. and you look at him, and it's like that guy looks like a franchise quarterback. And I feel like that's been. I mean, obviously we haven't seen JJ McCarthy, so we can't really speak on him yet. But Jaden Daniels at least has like validated that mm-hmm. he looks like the guy. So, uh, yeah, Washington again, surprise. Not as surprising as what the Vikings have been doing. Yeah, but still well, very. Even still, I mean, we thought the Commanders were not going to be a very good team either. I mean, that's true. I remember when we were going through that power ranking index, they were like <coughs> in the bottom five, if not lower, on the list. Yeah. Yeah, they were pretty low. And I mean, to be fair, that means that even the NFL pundits did not see their their game coming. So, yeah. I mean, again, uh, I still find the Vikings being undefeated slightly more shocking. Just because... So a little faith in Sam Donald. <laughs> like, at least Jaden Daniels was, like, an unknown. Mm-hmm. And I was like, he could be an X-Factor. I felt like Sam Donald was just going to be a straight negative for the team. It was like, they're going to be bad, and it's going to be because of Sam Darnold. <laughs> <laughs> and instead, it's like, they're really good, and it's because of Sam Darnold. Uh, it's not the first time he's gotten to a hot start, because uh, is the first year in Carolina. They started 3-0. and Yeah, I think they won four games that year, but they started really well. It was really front-end heavy for the win column. Uh, but yeah, so who's next on the list? Is it Philly or is it Dallas? They're both tied. They're both two and two. So Dallas and Philly. Um, I'll talk on Philly first, just because I feel like there's a little bit more to say about them. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> Dal- uh, fucking uh, Jalen Hurts has like not been good, and it feels like they just cannot figure things out on either side of the ball. And again, it's like, like I was saying earlier, it's like, I don't know for sure what the problem is because, like, on paper, they have the pieces and the talent to be good, and they have the coaching to be good, except for maybe Nick Sirianni. I'm not really sure. <laughs> like, uh, Fangio and uh, Kendall Moore, or, uh, Kellen, Moore. Kellen Moore are both good coordinators. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, all the pieces are there, but for some reason, they're not able to mesh them together, and they look like dog shit. So Saquon has been really good, though. Saquon has been good. Saquon has been very good. As a Saints fan, I have to say that Goddard looks really good. He fucking burnt us, even when our defense was balling out. Yeah. Uh, what I've noticed with Philly, Jalen Hurts looks like the Jalen Hurts of last year, not the year of the Super Bowl run. I have seen him make a lot, or like be responsible for a lot of turns. Like the way I described him earlier was... That he looks how Josh Allen taters think that Josh Allen is. Yeah. This is a dude that is run first. He is going to make a lot of turnovers. He's not going to be scoring as much as you guys like to think he is. And like we've said, we're both Sooner fans. We want to see Jalen Hurts do well. And he just hasn't been. And again, it's like one of those things, like, when you look at Jalen, it's like, again, by the, the numbers, it's like, he should be a good quarterback. He's got good arm strength. He's got good mobility. He's pretty accurate, at least on like the like like short to mid range. I don't know. I think that his deep range accuracy does fall off a little bit, but um, still, it's like he should be good. So it's confusing to try to figure out what's going wrong. Like, and again, I, like I said before, it was like there's been a whole lot of talk about like the relationship between Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni so maybe there's something there where it's like they have a miscommunication where they just are butting heads constantly and like I don't know but whatever it is it is not translating to wins on the field (laughs) it is translating to bad play I will say this I think if they miss the playoff Sirianni is gone I think so too yeah um and honestly like if they miss the playoff I, I could see them getting rid of Sirianni and maybe trying to trade Hurts at least just try to like offload him while he still has some value um but i don't know and it depends too on like how bad of a season they have if they have if they're like in a position to try to get the number one somehow then uh i don't think they're i i still feel like this is a playoff team i think they could be i think 
And like you said, AJ Brown and Devontae Smith have been mm-hmm. like awesome. that. I feel like they'll get it figured out enough. Like that. But then I look at a game like the Falcons game. It's like, this is a game they had won. Like, the offense mm-hmm. did what they needed to do. The defense did what they needed to do. Saquon literally dropped the ball. It was like his one bad play yeah. all year. And then just the... I, we were talking about it earlier. I hate watching prevent defense. Mm-hmm. It was like, if you guys play defense the way you've been playing defense all game, this should be a no contest. And you just let the other team go down the ball. But go down the ball. Go down the field and score. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then Jalen Hurts did what he's been doing all season, said, bet, I'm just going to turn the ball over. I'm going to throw an interception right now. I'm in this game right here. <laughs> Which, of course, is exactly how the Saints game ended against the Eagles the following week of, we got the game all but one. It's not that we were playing prevent defense, just our defense, our dudes literally ran into each other on a crossing route, which let Goddard get open. And like, well, fuck me, I guess. And then Carr throws a pick because the offensive line... Our center got injured on the first play. The interior offensive line was terrible all game. Pressure right in his face. Has to get rid of it. Throws a pick. Game. And then just like that. Uh, so, yeah. Then Dallas. Uh, See, it's funny because you were just saying, you're like, I think Philly sucks. I think Dallas sucks. I think Dallas is I had not said good Dallas either. is not going to make the playoffs, which felt like kind of a bold prediction. Now it really doesn't. Yeah, I, I don't know. Dallas is oh, like. Sorry, I had an alarm go off. We're going to ignore that. Oh, good. Uh, no, yeah, Dallas is another one of those ones where it's like, I don't understand why they're so bad. Uh, but, I, you know, I take that back. I do understand. It's because they're the Cowboys. Like, they will, they, I feel like they're, like, America's version of, like, the Saints, where it's, like, they're always, like, this, this is our year, <laughs> kind of is. Dallas is here, going to be Dallas is here, and then, like, after, like, week five, it's, like, all right, well, maybe next season. <laughs> well, it's kind of like what I was saying in that previous video. The reason I don't think the Cowboys are going to make the playoffs is because I feel like other teams try to get better. Like, okay, maybe it's not working as well for the Eagles. Maybe the Falcons have underachieved a little bit. But you can see the strides the teams took in the offseason. Like, we are trying to get better and be more competitive. And the Cowboys just said, no, we're good. We're going to go all in and not change anything. They got Zeke. They went... They got a DeLorean to go back to the past of, like, the glory days of 2016. You guys remember when we were able to go to the playoffs and win a game? (laughs) A game? Actually, that year they didn't win a game because they were the number one seed hosted the Packers, who were on just a tear that year, had a great game, but lost. Yeah, right. I, I know they, they have won games with Dak and Zeke, but that, that first year they were not able no. to, despite how good they were. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Dallas, um, go CD Lamb. That's that's all I have to say about them. As long as he's playing good, it's like, alright. He's an OU boy. So I guess here is the one question about Dallas. How long does Mike McCarthy stay? If they miss... Okay, so... Because I know that we talked about this uh, in the preseason when talking about could he get replaced midseason. Mm-hmm. Are we <laughs> on Belichick watching Dallas? <laughs> there's, I just feel like there's no way that Belichick comes back. I think he does. I don't think he would go for Jerry Jones, though. Yeah. I just... I don't know. I see him... If, like, if he came back, I feel like he would come back as like a front office executive. You know, I, he, I think he wants the head coaching record. Wants to get because oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's like, close. He's like, like ten games or something off of it. He just needs like one solid season. I think it's like one to two seasons. He could theoretically, yeah, theoretically feasibly get it. I mean, if he's only ten wins away, that's one good season. That's one Tom Brady season. That's one Tom Brady. If, Tom, if he could only have, have kept Tom in uh, New England for one more season. And didn't let him go to Tampa Bay. Who are, okay, so who are some of the teams? Dallas, I think, theoretically. Maybe Jacksonville. Jacksonville is the only team without a win right now. Belichick and Jacksonville sound wild. What if they got rid of Sean Payton? In Denver? Denver. That would be it. <laughs> Belichick coaching Zach Wilson. <laughs> He'll turn him around. He'll make him Tom Brady. I kind of want to see it. Uh, who else? Maybe the Titans. 
I mean, it's a first year head coach. I think they're going to give him some some, some grace, leeway, but yeah. they don't look very good right now. What about uh, who's uh, is it still what's his name Zach Taylor in Cincinnati? Yeah, I feel like I'm not going to say that I think Taylor's like a great coach, but I feel like because of those playoff runs, he has a really like long leash. Yeah. About a good amount of like good favor, good will yeah. built up. What about Kevin Stefanski? No, because I, Stefanski has been a good coach. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Like think, he's I don't think he's a bad coach. Like either. a couple years too. I don't think he's a bad coach either. It's just like one of those things. Where it's like, I wonder how long that they'll deal with like the mediocrity, you know. But at the same time, like you said, I don't think that you really can put that at the feet of the coach. So, who is a? Uh, Minnesota's head coach? Um, Kevin McConnell. Fucking kill it. Dude's a genius. <laughs> uh, yeah, so other than that, I mean, who's out in uh, Seattle right now? That is McDonald. I think it's Mike McDonald, who was the uh, Baltimore defensive coordinator last year. Mm -hmm. Man, Seattle's been so so. so. They were 3 and 0 oh, until the Lions game. They're three and one. Now it's not the most impressive comp because what is it? Uh, they beat Seattle. <laughs> they beat New England. <laughs> they beat themselves. They beat themselves. <laughs> Seahawks fans, I don't probably think that. So they beat Denver Week One because that was that really weird game where it was ten to nine because the Broncos had two safeties. Yeah, they won twenty six to twenty. Yeah, their first two weeks, so they beat the Broncos by only six points, and then they beat the Patriots by only three points in, in overtime. overtime. Then, I mean, to be fair, the Dolphins suck now, so they beat the Dolphins 24-3. to uh, And then they beat the... Or then they lost the, the Lions. Lions. So they're 3-1. and one. It's not an impressive Yeah, it's like, one. honestly, some of the worst teams, especially, like, the two-a-list Dolphins. Man, they have been bad. Well, speaking of which... Well, no, we'll talk about Miami. But um, good, because we were on Dallas. Yeah. That's right, because we were on Belichick watch. Yeah. That's, what, that's why we got distracted. So, yeah, Dallas, um, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, you, like I, I think it's not a hot take to say that they might miss the playoffs now. So, they have not been looking very good. And the Giants, maybe another team on Belichick watch. Yeah. Uh, Dable out there. Dable. Uh, yeah. The Giants have been the Giants. They're bad. They won a game, which was... Against who? Who did they play? Did they beat Cleveland? I'm 90 percent sure it was Cleveland. <laughs> yep, 21 to 15. And then they almost beat Washington. They almost beat Dallas, but I mean horseshoes and hand grenades. Yep, almost just isn't enough. Yeah, I mean, they just—they're uh... about what I thought they would be. Yep. Yeah, they just have been unimpressive. Um, League Neighbors is fun to watch. League Neighbors oh. has been like the one bright spot for them. He that dude is a stud. He uh, he's going to be really good. Which who knows how long he'll have to toil in New York before he gets traded somewhere that can actually make use of him. But yeah, at least it's something they got going for him. That he was a good draft. So, uh, so I think now it's just the NFC West. Yep. Yeah. Down to uh, we were talking about Seattle. Seattle is number one at three and one. Uh, and then they got San Francisco at two and two. Arizona and Los Angeles are both one, one and three. Uh, so yeah, starting with Seattle, of course, I kind of I I thought that they were worse. I didn't realize I I forgot that they were three and one. But I think it's just because again, like when you look at their games, they just don't feel impressive and it doesn't seem like they're doing a lot. But I guess they're doing enough to win. So uh, good old Geno Smith out there. Again, former <laughs> former Jets man. I'm sorry, I'm just like I remember that week one game because I hadn't seen the game. I had just seen the score. And at one point, I was like, "All right, ten to nine. Like that's a relatively normal yeah, like score. A probably like a missed extra point or some shit." Yeah. And I just kept like seeing posts of like Seahawks fans be like, "Why can't we play a normal game? Why are we so fucking weird? Like, what was weird about this?" And when I dug deeper, like. Wait, how the fuck did you give up two safeties? <laughs> that is the goofiest shit. Like, I have watched or followed Seahawks games that are just really weird in how they play out. Yeah, yeah they have weird luck. Or, or, I mean, bad luck, I guess, maybe on some of them. That's uh, the thing, because it's not even, like, bad or good luck. It's just 
Strange. Bizarre. They're just kind of a bizarro team. <laughs> they are. Yeah, they uh, they are definitely like I said, at least record wise, like on the on the year are better off than what I. Well, I take that back. Again, knowing the schedule, I probably if I would have looked at the first four games, I'd be like, they're probably gonna be three and one. Well, at, at, the, beginning, at the beginning England, of the season the... against Miami, I would have said mm-hmm. that they were gonna lose the game to Miami. But, but as soon as you saw how they looked without Tua, it's like, it's like okay, yeah, they'll they'll beat Miami. <laughs> Which I'll go ahead and say this. I don't talk about Miami yet. I don't feel bad about my crazy Miami prediction because that was assuming health. That was assuming Tua would be able to play. What was your crazy prediction? They're going to be the one seed in the oh, AFC, yeah. which, I mean, that's not fucking happening. Yeah, but. I got it. Unless Tua makes a miraculous recovery and comes back, which I don't They trade for Flacco. Yeah. God. Trade for Will Levis. Uh, they trade for Zach Wilson. There you go. And Zach Wilson throws bombs. He throws dimes. Tyreek Hill makes Because the best what they loved at his pro day was that this dude could throw down the field. And if there's one thing Tyreek Hill is good at, it is running fast and catching and deep balls. Waddell, too. So yeah, just have him run like a bird, have, bird oh. routes every single time, just bomb it down the field and Hail Mary every single play. How fucking fun would that be? How you know, hilarious would it be it's if be Zach like Wilson leads the Dolphins to the Touchdown or like 60-yard gain or an interception. <laughs> He's either leading the Broncos to the playoffs or the, or the Dolphins to the one seed. Let's go, Zach. That man is <laughs> cooked. Uh, San Francisco at 2-2. Two and two. Surprising that they are 2-2. Two and two. I mean, obviously, like I said, we, they were dealing with injuries, but still, I feel like they were going to have a little bit Better it's start. a lot of injuries. They're like Kittle, Debo. I don't remember if Ayuk is injured, but he hasn't been playing super well because he held out the entire fucking thing. McCaffrey. Yeah. I think Fred Warner is now injured. Uh, I think Dre Greenlaw, because he tore his ACL in the Super Bowl, he's not playing. They right now are kind of a shell of themselves mm-hmm. because of that. And if I remember correctly, in Kyle Shanahan's tenure as the 49ers head coach, they either have deep playoff runs or they miss the playoffs due to injury. Mm-hmm. And this might be one of those years where they... Now, granted, they're 2-2. Two and two. Most of the league is about in that 2-2 two and two range, so they are far from out of it. But depending on how long these injuries last, this could be a long year for San Francisco. Yeah. Which would definitely be a surprise. In that case, I mean, I would say right now I would still pick them to win the division. Because, again, like, Seattle has one better, like, they're one win better in the standings and don't look that much better. Hmm. The Rams don't look that good. The Cardinals are weird. They beat the shit out of the Rams. Had a really fun game against the Bills. Mm Mm-hmm. Did nothing against the Tommies, and I don't remember. And their other game against the Lions is actually a pretty tough game. I don't know. Maybe the – I don't – no, I don't really think the Cardinals are going to go on a run. Yeah. Which, given what I said about the Vikings and the Commies, I mean, the Cardinals are going to go, like, 12-3 and three the rest of the way or some shit. Yeah. God. I mean, it could happen. Uh, I was just looking at some of these projections for uh, early – awards kind of thing uh what did you just say the person they have listed right now for number one at mvp is Jaden daniels oh really <laughs> yeah has a rookie ever won mvp i feel like in the nba that's happened like they have josh allen at number two lamar jackson at three josh allen at two and Jaden daniels at one and literally the first line is, Alan hasn't been as good as Daniels. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Daniels has the highest expected completion rate of any quarterback, and he's completing a staggering 82.1% of his passes. That is insane. Jeez. Do you have Sorry. anything else about, that? <laughs> yeah, so anything anything else about San Francisco? <laughs> Uh, I just hope they get healthy and are able to turn their season around, because right now it's like, man, it's kind of sad to see them uh struggling so much because they have a good team uh but they're just not on the field <laughs> so yeah i think that they like you said they, it's a still got a, amount of, a decent amount of time in the season depending on how long the injuries stretch uh, will be a big factor so 
once we see, especially like CMC coming off of the IR and back onto the field would be huge for them. So seeing something like that uh, will definitely be a big factor. So, yep. Uh, then we got Arizona at one and three. Go Kyler Murray. He's been having a pretty decent season. Uh, haven't been turning into very many wins yet, but, you know, they've been in it. Uh, they had that good uh, week one game against the Bills, only lost by mm -hmm. six points. And uh, dominating game against the Rams. Yep. They're, they've are they had one game where they looked bad, and that, and was, that was last year's game. Yeah. yeah, and that they made Kyler uh, struggle. You know, they, were, they had a lot of pressure on him. He was uh, not able to have time to throw, wasn't able to get his, like, off-schedule runs going. So, yeah, they did a really, really good job game planning for him and keeping him contained. And then on the offensive side, just 42 points. So, huge game for them. But yeah, Arizona uh, didn't have, like, the highest expectations for him. You know, they're, they're, they feel like they're still, like, in the lower echelons of the league. Um, they have some good players, but it's just not enough to make them, like, a contender. So, one and three sounds about right for them. Um, I'm not super shocked. Marvin Harrison has some. Yeah, let me try that again. Has had some good numbers. Yes. Didn't really get to do much week one. But I think it was week two. It was like six catches, under 42 yards, two, three touchdowns or something. Yeah. Yeah, he's up to four touchdowns on the year already. Uh, 15 catches, 243 yards. So, not doing bad. Uh, his four touchdowns is actually side, tied for second in the league right now. So. It's the same amount as Justin Jefferson. Yeah. Who's number one? Uh, that's a good question. Let's see. Okay, so it has to be more than four. But it's like someone like, I bet it's someone like Mike Evans. I mean, if it's if it's only receiving touchdowns, then it wouldn't be Kamara. But if it's touchdowns in general, it could be like Kamara or Saquon. Because Saquon had a hat trick. It's Mike Evans. He's got five. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because I know you got two last night. Oh, okay. That makes sense then. But, uh, yeah. Arizona overall, just kind of where we expect them to be. Not not great. But Then there's the Rams, who are below where I expected them to be. Because I thought, I remember we talked about it. I think we both said we think they're in the playoffs. Yeah. I it wasn't super high on them and I was like I think, I think they'll I gave them a wild probably card slot. yeah I was like I'll probably get a wild card spot and they do not look good now so far they have not looked great and they I don't think really have a whole lot of injuries and stuff that they can blame that on um they have to be fair all the games except for the Cardinals game they've been uh, in it like the Lions went to overtime yeah the Lions game went to overtime the Bears they lost by six so um, and to be fair, the, the game that they won, they only barely beat the 49ers. It was a three-point game. So. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, they have not been uh, nearly as good as I was expecting them to be. Um, but maybe it's just one of those things where maybe Stafford's age is finally starting to show a little bit more. And losing Aaron Donald. Yeah. That, that's yeah, a very Aaron, hard guy to replace. Not Aaron Donald on the other side is huge. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they, just, they, they don't look nearly as good on either side of the ball uh, as what we were kind of expecting them to be, I don't think. Pretty sad, but at the same time, it felt like their playoff contention window was kind of closing anyway because of Stafford's age and, mm -hmm. and stuff. So, I mean, I think Cup is injured, Puka Nakua is injured, so they're kind of in the same situation as the Eagles. Yeah, well, it's like, all right, hand the ball off to Kyron Williams and let him run. I think he had like a 95 yards or something in the last game. Yeah, Kyron has not been bad, but unfortunately, they just don't have anything else really to do with him. So, yeah, the Rams uh, a little underperforming than what we, we were expecting, but it kind of makes sense a little bit. So, yeah, that is the NFC. Okay. Um, it might be too early to ask this question because it's only been four weeks. Do you want to take a mulligan on any of your playoff picks? Or do you think that's maybe something we should do at about week eight-ish? Let's wait until week eight. Let's see how these next weeks go, because I think it is too early for some of them. I mean, obviously, it's like some of the ones that we, we said where it's like, you know, Miami or whatever getting a playoff. Maybe maybe that one. <laughs> ones like that. Uh, but, no, yeah, I think for the most part, it's like we should probably wait and see a little bit more of the season, and then we can come back and... and uh, 
decide if we want to swap any picks. Okay. But, yeah, so overall, the NFC, uh, probably the more shocking of the two division, or I mean, the two conferences. I think I mean, so. Having the Vikings and the Commanders, like both, like, uh, just very unexpected to see them doing so. I, mean, well. I think the biggest shock in the AFC is how bad the Dolphins are. Like, that's that's because of an injury. Yeah, you're like, that would make down. sense. <laughs> the most shocking thing is that the Chiefs are, have been, like, in one score games every game, but are still somehow 4 0. Oh, man, they should have. That first game against the Ravens, that. That last second touchdown that wasn't a touchdown, just by a couple of inches, that those, those toes over the line. If dude wore like a size of shoe smaller, he got Kevin Durant. <laughs> that is exactly what happened. Them damn clown shoes on. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll call this one here, and we'll see you in the next one. Yep.